Yeah. So, hello everyone. Uh, I am Anil Kumar, uh, working in the area of the thermochemical conversion, including the combustion, pyrolysis, and gasification. So, uh, today is, uh, I am talking about the production of the activity carbon from the biomass and its application uh, in the area of the water purification. So, as we know, the India is the uh, uh, one of the largest uh, agrobiotic economy and uh, it produces uh, approximately uh, 500 to 550 million ton of the agrobiotic use annually. And uh, among them, the rice is the uh, uh, major crop residue, and uh, also the India is the uh, world's second largest rice producer nation. So it produces approximately 122 million tons of rice flow. And uh, the northern India, which is the uh, unique cast. Uh, because that for Punjab and Haryana, which is the two major states in the northern India, which produce the approximate and uh, 30 million ton of the rice straw annually. And uh, among them, the uh, approximate 22 million ton rice straw was born in C2 uh, in field. Uh, due to the lack of the sustainable rice straw management system, uh, rice straw mainly contains the uh, major part of the silica, and uh, it is a major issue. So it cannot be utilized as a feed for, for the animal and uh, also some of the issues related to the fish stock for the utilization of the combustion. So silica um, uh, will result as an agglomeration during the combustion in the boiler. So it was, uh, there is some of the limitations of the utilization of the fish stock for the combustion. That's why we have uh, uh, started the production of the activated carbon in the small scale. Uh, pyrolysis unit. Uh, so initially we uh, developed the activated carbon from this utilizing the steam as a physical activation agent and uh, potassium acetate as a chemical activation agent which is uh, non-toxic chemical. Uh, there are some of the chemicals like and uh, phosphoric acid, sulfuric acid, uh, NaOH, potassium hydroxide which is a toxic and uh, it might be a corrode for uh, in the equipment. Uh, also, the cost of the chemicals is quite high. That's why we selected the, uh, as a physical activation, as a steam and uh, potassium acid as a chemical activation element. So, this is the, our experimental setup. Uh, it is a batch reactor uh, having a capacity of 5 kg of the fish stock, uh, average particle size of the 2 to 4 mm, and uh, bulk density of the material is uh, 75. So, we have uh, checked as a uh, single step activation and uh, two step activation process. So, in the single step activation process, uh, initially we produce the biochar from the room temperature to 600 degrees Celsius and under the nitrogen environment. And then, after we shift that as a nitrogen to the steam for the rising the temperature from uh, 600 to 700 degrees Celsius. We have produced the activated carbon in the 700 degrees Celsius. So, uh, in the chemical activation agent, uh, we have a uh, uh, wet implication technique uh, utilized uh, for the chemical. Uh, potassium acetate we have first uh, diluted in the uh, 1 liter uh, of the water and then mixed with the uh, rice straw and uh, uh, it can be stabilized uh, in the for maximum of 12 hours and then we feed in the reactor and uh, similar process was uh, continued as in, in the physical activation. And uh, so during the activation, we have collected the uh, condensable gases uh, as in bio oil and uh, we have found that uh, there is a 22 percent of the uh, alcoholic compound. Uh, so Basically, it can be utilized in the uh, chemical industries uh, such as in textile and pharmaceutical industries and uh, there is a high demand in India. Uh, so, it can be utilized and it can be separated further, but we did not separate it. So, this is the two activated carbon, you can see this. of the activated carbon so activation and uh, the chemical activation we get a 255 uh, feet of square per kg and uh, we got an yield 
uh, 39% in the steam and uh, 35% in the production and capital activation. So, thereafter, we have utilized uh, it for the water purification for removal of the heavy metal contamination. So, we have uh, there is an uh, zinc uh, metal contamination problem in the state of the Punjab and uh, Haryana. So, we have targeted the zinc metal for the removal of the uh, removal from the water. So, and uh, we have uh, assessed the different uh, process parameters like a pH, uh, adsorbent dose, and contact time, and uh, initial matter concentration. So, based on the result, uh, we have concluded that we get the maximum adsorption capacity of the 35 milligram per gram in the protection uh, chemical activation for carbon and uh, approximate and 20 uh, sorry 17 percent in the uh, steam activation thereafter we did the uh, cost analysis so the cost analysis section we bought the 1.4 USD per kg of the physical activity carbon and uh, 2.57 USD uh, as a chemical activated carbon so difference in prices might be a vary due to the cost of the chemicals and uh, also the quality is also different. So next we have uh, utilized the uh, single step activation for the for the uh, physical activation uh, and we have assessed uh, we have optimized the different process parameters like and uh, temperature, holding time, and activation agent flow. So we have targeted the temperature range from 700 to 900 uh, holding time from 60 to 120 minutes and uh, activation agent flow rate from uh, 1500 to 2500 centimeter cube per minute. Uh, here we have utilized the uh, uh, H2O as a steam and uh, CO2 as an activation agent. So this activation uh, optimization was carried out uh, using the center composite design uh, tool. Uh, and we have designed the entire uh, program in the uh, design expert software. And uh, design expert software, uh, we will uh, produce the 20, ex 20 set of the experiment. And based on that, uh, uh, we have performed the experiment and get the result and op optimize the model value. So the model value having a temperature of the 712 and the flow rate approximate 2200 and uh, residence time of 120 minutes and uh, model suggests that at this experiment uh, you will get the 27 percent of the yield and approximate 400 of the surface area and uh, based on this model uh, value we have performed the experiment in our reactor and we get the desired result. Uh, which is the fluctuation uh, less than the 10 percent. That's why the model is the uh, success is uh, similar to the same uh, performance was played out in the steam activation, and the uh, result is here. So we have also carried out the cost analysis. So here the uh, CO2 activated carbon uh, having a 1.28 US dollar uh, per kg of uh, biochar and uh, H2O gets the 1.67 USD per kg. So you can see the quality of the biochar. Uh, upper one is the uh, H2O activated biochar and lower one is the uh, CO2 activated biochar. And uh, after that, we have uh, collected the water sample from the Ranchi uh, and the rural India. And uh, we have found the arsenic and manganese uh, in the water uh, arsenic is uh, approximate and uh, 192 microgram per liter and manganese is 1.5 milligram per liter so as we know that uh, arsenic is uh, quite high uh, compared uh, as we know uh, as we compared to the uh, WHO standard which is uh, 10 microgram per limit so we have targeted the uh, removal of the arsenic utilizing uh, these two biochar and uh, we have uh, get the desired result uh, from removal of arsenic. We, get, we got the 99% of the removal of uh, arsenic from the water. Uh, and the data is uh, uh, some of the confidences. That's why I have not uh, presented here. So yeah, so thank you.
Hello. Yeah. Thank you very much, Neil. Uh, um, so you got a question uh, in the chat during your presentation. Um, uh, no, actually, that was a, a discussion from the last uh, uh, presentation. Um, any questions? So please uh, unmute yourself now. Um, so first question from Vera. Uh, can you talk about the yields of your activated carbon? Yeah, so in the CO2 activated carbon, we got the yield uh, approximately 27%. And uh, in the steam activated carbon, we got approximately 30 percent. So you got more uh, yield in the steam activation. Yeah, but the surface area is a very uh, compared low. It is uh, 300 meters uh, meter square per gram, and in CO2 activation there is a 400 meters square per gram. And and what is the the ash content of this culture? Yeah, ash content is approximately 24 percent. This okay. is quite high. So it cannot be utilized as a fuel. Yeah, okay, that's why the yield is so high because the uh, 24%. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then a question from Felipe about um, you did modeling of the process. What did you use for this? Maybe you mentioned it, but he missed it. So did yeah, you? I we have used the response process methodology and utilized the center composite design tools. And uh, all the experiments were designed in the design expert software. Okay, I think that answers uh, Philippe's question, or if not, just reply. Um, Sudaka has his hand up. Is it still a question? If yes, if yes uh, just unmute yourself. Hello. Hello, this is Sudhakar Reddy yeah. from India. Yes, yes. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, yeah, sir. yeah, you are audible. Uh, you see, I, I want to know whether uh, any waste generated from biochar un unit can be diverted uh, to preheat uh, or say to dry the, se the seeds or grain, paddy seeds or grain. In a small scale setup. Uh, I just don't understand what you are saying. Whatever waste is generated from biochar unit, pyrolysis unit. Yeah. When you are preheating, you see the biochar itself through different chambers, can't we divert that uh, those gases you see to dry these seeds yeah. in a different chamber, in a drying chamber. Yeah, so uh, non-condensable gases uh, generally produced during the pyrolysis and uh, we got the heating value of approximately 6 megajoules per meter cube. So, which is somehow uh, possible to heat the or seed or any biomass uh, before uh, uh, utilized in the, the pyrolysis unit. It is an uh, sufficient uh, calorific value. It can be combustible and uh, can be utilized as a uh, preheating process. So the another question is uh, whether we can recharge and recycle uh, the ac activated carbon after doing its uh, function in rainwater harvesting, you see, after purifying water in, in various uh, bore wells. That means we take out these uh, active, activated carbon and we have to recharge and recycle before putting them into reuse in, in the very same soaking pits, which are meant to uh, purify water going into the underground uh, uh, pits or say underground aquifers. Could you understand me, please? Yeah. So. Instead of, instead of uh, again purchasing activated carbon, you know, we, we have to recycle or uh, uh, recharge the whole thing, you see, by some means. Whether you have such means to re recycle and then reuse it uh, 
like in the circular economy without having to purchase it is even again yeah so after the absorption of the heavy metal contaminant you can uh, reuse or uh, uh, regeneration was uh, there is a uh, process for the regeneration there are some of the chemicals are used in the regeneration but uh, after the regeneration uh, it's on uh, uh, absorption capacity of the biochar was uh, decreased approximately 30 to 40 percent uh, you cannot uh, get an original biochar after the regeneration so obviously obviously yes. the process like and chemical using for the regeneration and washing is uh, some of become the wash clear and it also generate the additional waste uh, uh, waste water so i think it is not and uh, somehow we can economical as but you can uh, utilize as a fuel after the after purification you can utilize as a fuel and you can collect at the ash and you can separate the metals from the ash no no we can can we use reuse in the same place or do we have to use it elsewhere uh, for other applications and secondly how are we to know whether it has reached a point when we have to recycle it See, otherwise uh, the impurities will go into the underground, the borders. Yeah, if, if you use uh, contaminated uh, biochar in the soil, and uh, then uh, metals will be transferred from soil to the plant biomass, and uh, it will also somehow dangerous uh, for the human health. So it cannot be. So, I think the the whole uh, discussion about reusing activated carbon is a quite complex one because it really depends on uh, what you're using it for um, and what you want to use it afterwards. Um, but yeah, recycling is quite an important topic for activated carbon use. Um, so thank you very much, Anil, for your presentation. And again, um, if you want to talk more with Anil, um, you have the email address on the screen now. And otherwise. Uh, you can also uh, watch the presentation again. Maybe that will answer some of your questions. Um, so we will upload that in the next couple of days.